In this packet tracer activity, use diagnostic commands. You will use various commands to gather device information and troubleshoot device configuration and connectivity issues. Device information includes IP address, default gateway, and DNS server settings. These settings are critical to enable a device to communicate on networks and connect to the internet. Part 1. Gather End User Device Settings In this part, you will document the IP address settings for end devices. Step 1 is document the IP address settings for HQ Laptop 1. The activity opens in the HQ cluster. The wiring closet is the tall black chassis in the bottom left hand corner of the first floor. Locate all the devices on the first floor. PC1, PC2, PC3, PC4, the first floor printer, and HQ Laptop 1. Click HQ Laptop 1, Desktop tab, Command Prompt. Enter the IP config command to discover basic IP addressing information. We have an IP address 192.168.50.2. Document the IP address. Notice that the DNS server address is not listed because it is not displayed by the basic IP config command. Enter the IP config slash all command to see the DNS server address. The DNS server is 10.2.0.125. Step 2 is document the IP address settings for NetAdmin. Click the wiring closet, NetAdmin, Desktop tab, Command Prompt. Enter the IP config slash all command and document its IP address configuration under the Fast Ethernet 0 interface. So the IP address 192.168.99.9 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Default gateway of 192.168.99.1 and the DNS server 10.2.0.125. Part 2. Gather information about network devices. In this part, you will document information about the link to ISP. You will then document the IP addressing information for all the end devices in HQ and discover that devices belong to different virtual local area networks or VLANs. Step 1 is gather network connection information about the link between HQ and ISP. In the wiring closet left rack, click HQ Edge CLI tab. Press Enter to get the HQ Edge prompt, and then enter the Enable command. Enter the Show IP Route command and pipe it to Begin Gateway. Notice that the IP address for the default gateway or gateway of last resort is all zeros or a quad zero route. This means that there is not a next hop IP address explicitly configured. You can verify this in the running configuration. Enter the show running config command and pipe it to begin IP route. Notice that the default route is configured with Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0 as the exit interface instead of an IP address. Let's use Cisco Discovery Protocol or CDP to discover the IP address of the next hop router that would be reached out this G0 slash 0 slash 0 interface. Enter the show CDP neighbors detail command. Here's the G0 slash 0 slash 0 interface. Notice that 10.0.0.49 is the IP address of the next hop for traffic exiting this interface. Other interesting information in the output includes the port HQ Edge is connected to on the ISP router, Gigabit Ethernet 1 slash 0, and the iOS version running on the ISP router, iOS PT1000. Ping the address for the ISP router. Enter the show arc command. This command will show the MAC address of the G0 slash 1 interface on the ISP router. Close HQ Edge and exit the wiring closet. 
Step two is gather network connection information about the devices in HQ. You need to gather the IP addressing information for all the devices on floor one. Use any method that you wish to do this, including the ipconfig command, to document the IPv4 addresses and default gateways and fill out this table. I already have them listed here. However, your IP addresses may be different depending on the DHCP assignment to the device. PC1 is here. You can use the ipconfig tool to document this, or of course, ipconfig. For the printer, you can float your mouse over the printer to see the IP address, or you can click it, choose the config tab, wireless zero, and see the IP configuration here. The default gateway for the printer is shown in the settings. For PC1-1, enter the ARP-A command inside the command prompt. Notice that no ARP entries are found because PC1-1 has not yet sent any traffic. Use the ping command to ping the other devices on floor 1. Re-enter the ARP-A command. Notice that now the ARP table has the IP address and MAC address or physical address of the default gateway and PC1-2. There are no entries for the other devices in the table because they are on separate networks. Pings from 192.168.10.0 network to other VLAN networks would need to go through the default gateway first. The ARP table only contains the information about devices within the same LAN or VLAN. To find the route a packet takes to reach the DNS server, enter the traceroute 10.2.0.125 command. Notice that there are two routers between PC1-1 and the DNS server. 192.168.10.1, the default gateway router, and 10.0.0.49. Part 3. Diagnose Connectivity Issues. In this part, you will use a variety of diagnostic commands and techniques. You will use the nslookup command to query a DNS server and troubleshoot a DNS database. You will then diagnose why a ping fails but web access is successful. Finally, you will use the netstat command to discover which ports are listening on the target device. Step 1 is test a URL to investigate a connectivity issue. On PC1, close the command prompt and then click web browser. Enter the URL test.ptsecurity.com. Notice that the message Hostname unresolved is displayed. Enter the IP address 192.168.75.2. Notice that the web page now displays. The PC cannot resolve the domain name for the IP address, but if you enter the IP address directly, then no name resolution is necessary. Step 2 is use the nslookup command to verify DNS service. Close the web browser and then click Command Prompt. Enter the ping test.ptsecurity.com command. Notice that the message tells you that the name could not be resolved. This indicates that there is no DNS entry in the database of the DNS server. Enter the nslookup test.ptsecurity.com command. This validates that the domain name entry is missing and that 10.2.0.125 is the default DNS server. The nslookup command supports the use of alternate DNS servers. Enter the nslookup slash question mark command to learn options available for the command in Packet Tracer. We will use this option. Just look up host using the DNS server with the IP address a.b.c.d. 
Let's specify 192.168.99.3 as the DNS server we want PC1-1 to use for NS lookup. Note, Packet Tracer may take several seconds to converge. And now we get a response. Previously, when we entered the domain name, the PC tried to resolve it through the default DNS server, which did not have a DNS entry for test.ptsecurity.com. Step 3 is use output from the ping command to diagnose connectivity issues. Enter the ping mail.cybercloud.com command. The ping times out, but we know that it's not a DNS issue because the first line of the output shows that PC1-1 received an IP address for the domain name from the DNS server. The ping failed possibly because the host is inactive or the ICMP messages are disabled on the host. Enter the ping www.ptsecurity.com command. This time, we get a bit more information, the destination host unreachable message, which typically indicates that there is a firewall blocking pings. Close the command prompt, open web browser, and then navigate to www.ptsecurity.com. Notice that the web page displays fine, indicating that the host is reachable through HTTP but will not reply to ICMP messages. Step 4 is use the netstat command to find active and listening ports. Close web browser and reopen command prompt. I'm going to click top so this window stays on top. In HQ, click the wiring closet. From the right rack, click the FTP server Desktop tab, Command Prompt. Arrange the PC1-1 and FTP server command windows so that they are side by side, as I have here. From the PC1-1 window, enter the netstat command. This command displays information about active and listening ports. Notice that there are currently no connections. From the FTP server, Enter the netstat command. Notice that a few ports are listed as closed. Port 25 is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP. Port 110 is Post Office Protocol Version 3, or POP3. And Port 8443 is for Virtual Machine Management inside Packet Tracer. On the FTP server, enter the ipconfig command to determine its IP address. 192.168.75.2 From PC1-1, start an FTP session with the FTP server. On the FTP server, enter the netstat command. Notice that now there is an established session for port 21, which is FTP control. Authenticate with username Bob and password Cisco. The next few steps need to be done very quickly to see the closing of sessions on the FTP server. From PC1-1, enter the put sample2.txt command and then quickly on the FTP server re-enter the netstat command. If you do it fast enough, you'll see the TCP connection closing for the file upload. This is the session for the file upload and it's closing. Wait a few seconds and then enter the netstat command again to see that the connection is gone. From PC1-1, enter the quit command. From the FTP server, enter the netstat command again to see that the connection is now closed. From PC1-1, close the command prompt and open web browser. 
navigate to 192.168.75.2. From the FTP server, enter the netstat command again. Notice that a TCP connection to port 80 for HTTP is closed. A web page request was made by host 192.168.10.2, and after the web page was transmitted, the TCP connection was closed. This concludes this packet tracer activity. Use diagnostic commands.